Hi, in this video I'll show you how you can use DVW Analytics SAP connector to bring data directly from your SAP transaction codes or reports into your Power BI solution. Let's start in our XCS console. This is where you configure connectivity to your SAP systems. You can see here that it's very similar to your SAP logon pad containing all your different systems and their configurations. We use the configuration button to create a particular connection to an SAP object, whether it be table, BW query, transaction code or report. So let's create a new one from scratch for a transaction code. Here's the configuration window for our connection and you can see that we can choose which type of object we want to connect to, whether it be an SAP table, a BW query or info object, or in this case, an ABAP report or transaction code. The first thing to do is enter a name for our connection, which will be the file name which is stored securely on our local machine. Next, we select the system, the SAP system that we want to connect to. You can see I've got lots here, but I'm gonna connect in this case to my ECC system. You can see my credentials have been returned. They're held encrypted, of course. And now I can ping the system and establish that connection. I'm actually going to jump across now to that SAP system and run the transaction code that we're interested in, FBL3N. So you can see here the typical parameter screen and I'm going to use a variant that I've already saved. I double click on there and it brings in some parameter values, which you can see here. And I'll run the T code and you can see that when I run that T code, we get a typical SAP output. It's got multiple tables, small tables, each one related to a combination of GL code and company code. Now this is a nicely formatted table in SAP, but obviously downstream in analytics, it's not particularly ideal. But let's see what we can do in the tool. So in the T code, we enter our transaction FBL3N as before. We search and that retrieves the program name or the report name into the tool. But we've also retrieved the variants that we saw. So I can run a variant saved in our SAP system within the tool. All I need now do is to look at the data preview and then select the raw preview option to run the transaction code directly in this interface. You can see the output here. We have, as you can see, GL and company code and the mini tables that we saw before and they're repeated as you can see again and again. Now we could use that data downstream in our analytics. However, we've got functionalities within the tool to tidy this data up. So if we look at this header field, for instance, we could add this and the company code into a column. So we define those as header fields and the tool will place them into columns inside this table. This table has its own headers, of course. So we can select the header row. And as you can see, once we run the raw preview again, they're color coded to highlight these fields. We can also see that blank rows have been automatically ignored. They're colored in gray, but we can ignore other rows too. So this row of dashes, for instance, if we right click, and choose to ignore, then we see in the configuration that these dashes, anywhere they're seen in the first 10 characters, will be ignored. We can also ignore totals rows. So if we right click and ignore, then it enters another configuration. It's not picked it up quite right, but that's not a problem. We can change that. What we really want to do is anywhere where there's pipe followed by a space space star, as you can see in the totals row, and that's going to be in the first four characters, then ignore that. If we hit raw preview again, then you can see that that configuration has been applied. So now the data in white will be extracted together with the headers that we've configured. And that configuration is repeated, even though we've only entered it once, throughout the mini tables from the output report. So if we now go to preview, we'll see that the company code and GL account have been inserted into columns, that all the additional rows have been removed. And it's this that we'll see in our downstream analytics. The last thing to do is to save our configuration back onto our hard drive locally. And then we can look onto the configuration list, which once refreshed will show our configuration. And if we right click on there, we can copy the URL that we're going to use to connect to our data from Power BI. Okay, let's jump across into Power BI then and connect to that OData service. We simply enter the URL that we've just copied and say OK. And the list of connections are then shown within Power BI for us to choose from. We select the one we're interested in and we get a preview of the data and then we can load that data into the solution. So when we've hit load, it runs that transaction code back in the SAP system and brings the current data into Power BI. We see the structure of that data shown here 
and we can see the actual data itself using the table tool. Now it's in Power BI now, so we can play around with the data, cleanse it for instance. We can make this instead of text into a decimal, um, identify it if we wish as a currency, so dollars, and maybe arrange the decimal places. And once we've done that transformation, we can use all the functionality of Power BI to visualize the data, to combine it with other data sets, etc., etc. So for instance, we can create table analyses by dragging and dropping the relevant data into the table, as you can see here, consolidating that data. Of course, we can filter the data as necessary within Power BI, create visualizations quickly, and save that report so that it can be refreshed at any time. And indeed, just by right-clicking on the data source, we can refresh the SAP data to be absolutely current. Therefore, our reporting is up to date. So that's quick five minutes to show you how to get SAP T codes into Power BI. Hopefully that was interesting for you. If you'd like to see more, please visit our website at dvwanalytics.com.